Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we're taking a look today at the Lenovo Legion Slim 7. This is a full performance gaming laptop that is among the thinnest I have seen. And this one has a new Ryzen processor and a new NVIDIA GPU inside. And we're going to take a closer look at what this laptop is all about in just a second. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure, this is on loan from Lenovo. So we're done with this. It goes back to them. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this laptop is all about. Now the price point on this is about $1,500, but of course the price will vary based on configuration. The model that we have here is running with a 15.6 inch 1080p display that is running at 165 nits. It supports Dolby Vision for high dynamic range video and it also has NVIDIA G-Sync built in as well. I would say this is probably the display to look at with this model, given that it can run at the higher frame rates and has the G-Sync. There's also a 4K version available that runs at 60 hertz and is slightly brighter at 500 nits. But I will say for a 300 nit display, this one looks really bright to me. So I've been very pleased overall with the image quality here. It covers 100% of sRGB, so it's good for creative professionals as well. Inside, we've got an AMD processor, a Ryzen 7 5800H that is running with the new Zen 3 architecture. Our model here is configured with 16 gigabytes of RAM. Eight gigabytes of RAM is soldered on the motherboard, and then there is another single RAM slot for additional memory. This one has that memory slot filled, so we have 16 gigabytes total. You can see what that looks like here. The RAM goes in uh, that black box there in the middle. To the right is an NVMe drive. The model that we have is running with a one terabyte NVMe. And then there's a slot for an additional NVMe drive to the left of the battery. So you do have some ability to upgrade the memory and storage on this one. When that second RAM slot is filled, like this one is right now, you will be running in dual channel memory mode. Now, in addition to that AMD processor, we also have an NVIDIA 3060 GPU on board. That delivers exceptionally good performance, especially given how thin and light this thing is. Check it out. It's less than an inch thick, about 0.7 inches or uh, 18 millimeters, and it weighs 4.19 pounds or 1.9 kilograms. It is super lightweight. There is a cost, though, to this being as thin as it is, and that is the fan noise. It will be a little louder, a little higher pitched than a larger gaming laptop might be. And you'll hear those fans kick on pretty aggressively when you're putting the computer under heavy load, playing a triple A game or something like that. So just be prepared for a little louder fan noise on this one. But if you want the portability, you can certainly get it here. They do have a couple of modes you can switch it into to lower the fan noise. Right now I've got it on battery in standard mode. It'll be relatively quiet even if you're web browsing and doing some basic word processing and other things. Uh, they also have a quiet mode that will kind of force it into that quiet status a little more aggressively. So if you hit function Q here, you'll see that the uh, power light here turned blue. And when it's in that mode, it is going to run a little slower, but it will not make any noise at all. So there are ways to mitigate the fan noise on this a bit, but when you want the performance, you're gonna have to deal with it. And if you don't like the fan noise, you might wanna buy one of the larger Legion laptops that also generate fan noise, just not as loud as this one will be. Speaking of battery life, when you do have it in that low powered mode, you could probably squeeze about seven hours of usage out of this, kind of close to what you might get on an Ultrabook, but you're gonna to have to keep that display down and you're certainly not going to get eight hours of gameplay out of this. So you'll definitely want to keep your power supply nearby in order to keep it going under more high performing tasks. Now the build quality on this feels very nice. It is mostly aluminum. So you have a nice rigid feel to it. It doesn't feel flimsy at all. I also like how well balanced it is. You can lift up the display lid here with a single hand, it won't take the keyboard up with it, and the display will uh, go down almost flat here as well. It is not a touch display. At the moment, there doesn't appear to be a touch option available, 
but I am very happy with the overall quality of the display and it has a nice matte finish that shouldn't reflect too much light. Now we've got a number of ports on this laptop, but not as many as you might see on some of the larger Legion units. Let's take a look here on the left-hand side first. We've got a headphone microphone jack over here and a full-size SD card reader. I'll pop in an SD card here so you can see what happens when you stick it in. It sticks out. So you can, of course, get your video ingested for video editing quite easily with this, but you're not going to be walking around with that card in it all the time. On the back here, we have two USB 3 ports. These are Gen 2 ports running at 10 gigabits per second each. You also have your power plug over here. The power adapter is your standard Lenovo Fair, a 230 watt supply here. And that of course will provide enough power for the computer to operate at full performance. Now, in addition to the power in the back here, you can connect up USB type C power sources to either one of these two ports on the back, but they will not supply enough power to allow you to run this thing at full blast. You might see it using the battery to maintain its performance or you might see performance degraded. You will get a warning when you plug in a USB power source. It'll tell you it's not enough. But if you're just doing some basic work on it or something at a docking station, it should be okay for that. Uh, just know though, for the best performance, you're gonna wanna use that power adapter in the back. Now these two ports are not Thunderbolt ports. They are USB Type-C uh, 3.2 Gen 2. So that also means they're not USB 4 ports either. Uh, they will do 10 gigabits per second each. You can get video out of these for external displays, so you can drive 4K displays if you want. But again, no Thunderbolt on this one, likely because it is running with an AMD processor. I think we'll start seeing more USB 4 ports coming in the near future on these models, but right now, this one is still running with the prior gen USB 3.2. Now at the top of the device, you get a tiny little webcam, and it has a tiny little shutter on it should you want to block the camera from view. It is only a 720p webcam, so the image quality is not spectacular out of it, but it is, of course, good enough to do a web conference or something along those lines. But if you are looking to get into streaming or something, you'll probably want to connect up a higher-end camera to one of the USB-C ports. So let's take a look at the keyboard and trackpad now. This is an RGB backlit keyboard, and you're seeing some of these keys reflecting off the bottom of the display in this overhead shot. You will not see that reflection when you're using the laptop normally. This is just a function of the camera angle that I have right now. Uh, so don't worry about that light row there. Now the keys are very similar to what we've seen on other Lenovo laptops over the last couple of years. That's not a bad thing. They've got a great keyboard, nice big keys that are well spaced, good tactile feedback on them. The key travel or how far the key pushes down is more shallow on this Legion laptop versus some of their other ones. It's about 1.3 millimeters. The newer Legion laptops have very deep travel, much deeper than this, and a lot of people really like that deep travel. You're not gonna have that here, but the keys do feel very nice. If you have a thinner or lighter Ultrabook, this will feel a lot like that. It just won't have the depth that you'll encounter on some of the bigger Legion laptops. Your power button here doubles as a fingerprint reader, so you can get in uh, with a key press there or a button press. Uh, the camera, though, at the top does not support facial recognition, but you do at least get some Windows Hello capability here. You will also notice that my power button is lit up red right now, and that's because I have it plugged in and in full performance mode. So you'll be able to see what mode you're in just by looking at the power button there. So this is the quiet mode, and then this is the standard automatic mode. And again, the red mode here will always ensure you get the best performance. It's also got a very nice trackpad on board. Of course, you'll probably connect a gaming mouse if you're doing uh, first-person shooters or something like that, but I found it to be very accurate, not that slippery, and very nice to use. Now, the software they have on board for controlling the keyboard lighting is called IQ. Every key can be individually configured, and what I found out of the box is that it does this rainbow twirling thing, and the good news is that if you don't want to futz around with this, you can go over here to instant lighting and make it a static color here. So you have a bunch of colors that you can just apply to the keyboard overall. So if it's getting annoying in an office environment or something, you can very quickly escape out of your presets and get a standard lighting scenario going. If I turn this off, it will revert back to what I have set down here. 
Now you can set up a number of different profiles and you can have the keyboard do different things. And the settings are layered. So right now, if you look here, Spiral Rainbow is going on the bottom uh, of the list here. And then above Spiral Rainbow, I have Static Color. And what I did here is I set the W, A, S, and D keys to be red all the time. So they're not pulsing like the other keys are right now. And I could hit the control key and add a few other keys to the mix, like my space bar, backspace, and return keys. And now I've layered those as red as well. And the reason why those keys are staying static is because static color is above spiral rainbow here on the list. But if I reversed it here, you can see that uh, those static colors disappeared because spiral rainbow is now on top. So you can really get pretty granular in how you configure the keyboard lighting on here. And if you're into that kind of thing, I think you will uh, like playing around with IQ. So let's take a look at how well this plays games. We'll begin with Fortnite 1080p at the Epic settings. And here we were getting between 80 and 110 frames per second. Really smooth, everything really played quite nicely on here. Uh, next up here is Call of Duty Warzone. 1080p here, high settings with ray tracing enabled. And Jake, who helps me out here on the channel, was getting between 90 and 120 frames per second playing this game with that onboard 3060. Uh, next up, we'll take a look at an older game, GTA 5, 1080p once again at highest settings. And here we were getting between 65 and 90 frames per second, very playable. And it's good to have that G-Sync display on here to regulate things a bit. Uh, Doom Eternal is next up here on the list. We ran this at Ultra Nightmare settings, which I guess is the highest. And here we were getting between 50 and 75 frames per second at 1080p in that mode, which looks great. Next up here is The Witcher 3. This is another older game running at 1080p Ultra. We were getting between 90 and 100 frames per second there. Uh, now we've got Red Dead Redemption 3, uh, 2 here uh, running at the highest settings, 1080p uh, between 60 and 70 frames per second. Another great uh, performing AAA title on this one. And we'll round things out here with Apex Legends. Uh, this is running at 1080p at the highest settings. And we were getting between 90 and 125 frames per second. So everything we threw at it ran great on that built-in 3060. Again, desktop performance of a 3060 will be better, but this is something that weighs about four pounds and you can take it with you everywhere. And I was really pleased with the performance level that we got out of this. Uh, this will also do very well for virtual reality uh, because it is a very capable performer, both with its CPU and GPU. So you should be able to get good VR, probably going at mid-range settings across most of the modern VR titles. And some of the older ones should run really well at higher settings. And on the 3D Mark Time Spy benchmark test, we got a score of 8,227. The GPU performance on this one lines up almost identically with the 2080 that I've got in my older Y740 that I bought a few years ago. So very nice performance here out of a slimmer and lighter design. You can also see how well that AMD Ryzen processor is performing against a 10th generation Intel chip that we have on the Legion 7i that we looked at a few months back. So the performance level here is great for the form factor and we were very pleased with its overall gaming performance. And on the 3D Mark stress test, we got a passing grade of 97.7%. You can also see the temperatures that the CPU and GPU were running at at the conclusion of that test. And what that tells me is that the laptop will be able to maintain its performance even under heavy sustained load. So you do though wanna make sure that the airflow remains clear on this because that performance level depends on clear airflow. That means keeping the bottom clear, it means keeping the sides clear, and it means keeping the back of it clear so that air can flow through and keep this thing running at a usable temperature. Uh, one other thing to note is that the speakers on this are downward firing. They're located on the left and right hand side of the unit. The audio quality out of this was much better than I expected. It doesn't have a lot of deep, punchy bass, but it's got some of these 3D audio effects from SteelSeries that gives it a really nice sense of space. I was actually surprised by how good it sounded, even though these are downward firing speakers that I'm usually not a fan of. So the audio quality is good, of course. It'll get better though if you plug in a pair of headphones or use Bluetooth headphones. It has Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth on board, very good network connectivity. You will need though to get a dongle for Ethernet 
on this one because there is no built-in networking. Overall, not a bad machine here. Again, very nice performer given the slim form factor here. And if you're looking for a gaming laptop that is thin and light, this is definitely worth checking out because it does deliver exceptional performance in a relatively thin form factor. That is going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Chris Allegretta, Tom Albrecht, Jim Callagher, Hot Sauce and Video Games, and Brian Parker. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.